Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, father of the Effortless English System. I train you, I teach you. You will speak English fluently. You do speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you join my VIP program, you commit. Don't quit. Commit to my VIP program now at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Live on YouTube in Japan here. It is Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas again. Uh, nice day. We have two little elf babies today. I was woken up by an elf baby. We have these, uh, one of our, I think it was my, my sister gave us these little costumes, these little uh, outfits for our babies that they look like Christmas elves. Very cute. <laughs> one, of my babe, one of my babies came crawling in this morning. Super cute. Today's topic is rhythmic change, rhythmic change. It was something I was thinking about yesterday. I was trying to think of a topic for today, and I remembered thinking about this yesterday, and I thought, hey, I'll talk about it with you all. Why not? It's kind of an interesting topic about change. Uh, what Tony Robbins calls, um, what does he call it? Stability? Certainty. He calls it certainty. Certainty and variety. Certainty and variety. Another way to say this would be the, the characteristics of stability and change. Stability and change in our lives. And we kind of need both, right? So we'll talk about that and kind of ideally, how do we manage stability and change? How do we manage variety and certainty in our lives to get the most happiness, the most fulfillment? the most success. First of all, welcome to all of you. Merry Christmas. A lot of you saying Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to all of you. Christmas Eve. Hope you have a nice Christmas Eve and a great Christmas day tomorrow. Probably no show tomorrow on Christmas Day. Take a, take a break. All right, let's talk about this topic now. Rhythmic change, rhythmic change. First, I'll kind of uh, review Tony Robbins teaching on this topic. So Tony Robbins talks about certainty and variety, certainty and variety. He has this uh, kind of teaching he does about what he calls the six human needs, uh, the kind of general things we need in our life, just psychologically, to in order to be, you know, somewhat happy, satisfied and satisfied and some of them they seemingly they're opposites and that's the case here so he talks about certainty and variety certainty and variety that all humans we all need and we all value certainty and variety in our lives and we need some amount of both what is certainty well certainty is predictability or stability it's the opposite of change it means that you know what's going to happen, right? We need this. We need this in our lives. Without certainty, life is chaos, right? If, you, if there was no certainty, if you had no idea what was going to happen each day, like you had no idea the sun, maybe it would come up tomorrow, maybe the sun would not come up tomorrow, right? There was no stability at all, <laughs> no certainty. You're, you could not be certain of anything. Just random change all the time. Well, the whole world would fall apart. There would be no laws. There would be no dharma, no natural law, nothing. It would just be total chaos. And uh, even in your own life, right? Even within your own life, not, not talking about nature, but just in your own life. If every day is there was no stability at all, you wake up at a different time every day, you go to bed at a different time, you eat at different times every day. Every day, 
completely new people. Everything's constantly new, 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 different, 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 different. Everything's changing nonstop. This would be chaos and would become super stressful, right? You would not be happy in that situation because as humans, we need some predictability, some certainty. We also need, however, we also need variety, what Tony calls variety. And variety is change, right? New things, differences. So everything's not the same. And we can see, of course, that too much stability, too much certainty is also not good because then it's boring. This is what we call, you know, like a routine if you're in the rat race and you just get up at exactly the same time every day and you get dressed for, for work, you eat the exact same food for breakfast, you put on the same suit or the same clothes, you know, you go follow the exact same schedule, you go to your job, your job, you do exactly the same work every single day at your job, you come home at exactly the same time, every day is exactly the same, and we know what happens. Then we become super, super bored. We become depressed if everything is too certain, too predictable. We need some change, some variety, some challenge, some newness in our lives so that we kind of stay fresh, right? We keep this feeling of being awake and alive. And so what you can see is that we need both. We need some amount of certainty and stability in our lives, and we need some amount of variety and change. And of course, different people like a different amount. Some people are very adventurous, so they like maybe a bit more variety, a bit more change, a bit more challenge. Some people prefer a bit more stability, but we all need both. We all need both, and you might want one to be a little stronger or the other to be a little stronger, but we need both to be satisfied, to feel alive, to learn, to be happy. We need both. So it's a good question of like, how do we manage this? How do you, what's, what's a good way to manage to get just the right amount, just the right amount of change and differences and newness and just the right amount of stability. And one, one answer, a very traditional answer, which we can see in our cultures, which we in fact can see in nature, in nature we can see this, is what's called rhythmic change, rhythmic change. So for example, let's say in the, the Northern Hemisphere, and perhaps parts of the Southern Hemisphere, we see the seasons, right? The seasons, it's a good model, it's a good example of rhythmic change, of stability, certainty, and variety both, right? Because what? We have four seasons in the North. We have four seasons every year. So there's spring, and then there's summer, and then there's fall, and then there's winter, right? So it's there's change. It's not just the exact same weather, the exact same thing every single day. There are these seasons, so we get change. There's variety, and it's kind of nice, right? Each season has different qualities. Uh, each season, we can do different activities. If you live in the far north in the winter, you can go snowboarding or skiing or things like that. Ice hockey, <laughs> ice skating. And in the summer, of course, we can go swimming. And, and so there's a nice variety. So during the year, it's you don't get bored. It's It's kind of a... You know, there's always a change. Every three months, things change, new activities, new weather, new climate. It's very nice. There's that variety. On the other hand, it's stable. It's not chaotic. It's not unpredictable, right? Because it's only four seasons, and we know they always follow each other, right? After spring, there's always summer. After summer, always fall. After fall, always winter. So, there's a predictability, a stability. We know what's coming next. So we're not, the weather's not chaotic, right? So it feels familiar. And this also gives us a nice warm feeling, a good feeling. We know there's a stability. You also find this in traditions all around the world. Every culture, there are traditional holidays, traditional festivals. So this is something new every year, right? It only happens once a year. So maybe you're doing the same thing 
the same thing, getting a little bored, but now it's Christmas time. And so, ah, in Christmas time, there are all these new things. There are the lights, right? The beautiful lights, the beautiful decorations, you know, gifts for the children, the Christmas tree, all of these wonderful things. Songs, some movies and shows, all of these stories. So it's kind of a special time. It's it's different than the rest of the year. It gives us this variety, this newness. But it comes every single year, so it's also predictable. So it also feels predictable and, and stable. You know, children love this. Children love this kind of change. Change, so it's not boring. It's not the same all the time. But on the other hand, not too much change, right? Change that is predictable. And so this is why traditions are very important. Cultural traditions, you know, some of them are religious. Christmas, of course, is very religious for Christians. But Christmas also has roots, a history that is pre-Christian, before Christian, that, is, that are more just cultural, that are more connected to nature. That's why the trees and the, the candles and many of the Christmas traditions are pre-Christian, right? That are more focused on the natural world. So there's both elements in modern Christmas. And, you know, there are other you know traditions that maybe are, you know, like in America, we have Independence Day in July where we have barbecues and it's kind of a very summer uh, festival and fireworks and all of these things. And a lot of countries have something like this. But you get the idea. These are important. These kind of um, special times that repeat. Okay, and this is important for families. It's, it really is great for families, both for you individually to be happy, but also for your children and your families to have these kind of repeating, repeating special things, right? Birthdays, another example, celebrating birthdays. In, uh, in America, we always celebrate birthdays, especially for children. And so again, it's some, it repeats every year, but it's a special time. It's only one day per year. So it's that, again, that combination of something special, but it also repeats, right? It's also has, it's predictable, it's every year, but it's special. It's only one day per year. So the point is, you can create these in your own family. You can, of course, follow your own culture, right? Ramadan is once a year for Muslims. It's a special time. Right? Ramadan, you can fast any time, of course, but Ramadan, when everybody's fasting and it's all a very special festival, it's once a year. It's a special time. And it, it's, it's a change from the normal time, right? Christmas, Easter. So there are religious ones. There are cultural ones, like I said, like the 4th of July, Independence Day in America. So those are great to follow. But you can also just create ones in your own family. Why not? You can just make any traditions. You can make traditions where, you know, for example, every week, maybe one day per week in your family, you have a special time, a special night, a special meal. I'll give you an example from my own family growing up. Every Sunday, we had a barbecue. This was my dad's idea. And my dad created this, this tradition. It was not every day. But it was every, it was once a week. It was every Sunday, every Sunday dinner. He had a barbecue in our backyard, in the back of our house. And he would barbecue. It was the same meal every time. <laughs> so it was predictable, right? There was some amount of predictability where it was the same, right? I always had a hamburger. So he would grill hamburgers for me. And he would grill steak for everybody else. I didn't like hamburgers as a kid. I like, I mean, I didn't like steak when I was a kid. I like it now, but I didn't like it then. So anyway, it was basically the same meal, but it, but only once a week. And it was kind of this, uh, it felt like a special little thing, just a special little tradition once a week. And we would always eat together and it would kind of made our family a little closer. And you can do these things. You can do all kinds of things. It might be special meals. Uh, maybe a special meal for birthdays, maybe a special meal once a week, maybe a special meal for certain holidays. It could be other things, maybe, maybe a vacation you take, maybe at the same time every year you take a vacation, a family vacation together, right? It's the same time every year, so it's predictable and stable. You get that certainty, but maybe you go a new place every year. 
So it's uh, there's also variety and change. And this this is just such a great way in 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 a family and in life to have enough excitement to keep you know life feels fun and interesting, but also enough uh, predictability where life feels safe and comfortable too. And I think that's one reason that holidays and cultural holidays and festivals are so powerful and so important. They have been in all of human history. These kinds of festivals, these cultural festivals and traditions uh, have been and will continue to be very, very, very important. And again, you can have all different levels from very, maybe very serious religious ones to just fun, you know, cultural ones to just silly ones, just like you could do a game night. I plan to do this with my kids where once a week we'll do get, we'll play games like all the whole family together. We can play little board games and maybe have a special meal, like almost like a little family party once a week. Maybe Sundays again, maybe it'll be Sundays, maybe it'll be Saturdays. I don't know what day yet, but when my kids get older, I plan to do that. So I recommend to you, I've, I did a quite a long VIP lesson about, about this topic, but I just want to introduce the general idea to you of these kind of repeating special events, these repeating special days, these repeating special times. They are very, very powerful individually and also very powerful for your family. Also, this is a good way to kind of, you can kind of see this even in your English learning, the same idea. So on one hand, you need repetition. You know that, right? You need a lot of repetition. So you need to listen to the same mini story again and again and again. You need to do some of the same activities many, many, many times. But on the other, you know that that's for deep learning. You need that. But on the other hand, you know that too much repetition, only repetition, then you get bored. Then you start to get bored. You need variety also. You need new material. You need to listen to new podcasts, read new books, find new things in English. So this keeps your brain interested so you don't get bored. But you don't want too much of that. Too much of that and then you don't get enough repetition. So you see that you kind of have to manage both. So in your English learning, when you start to feel bored, get some, do some new things. Listen to some new podcasts. Read some new books. Watch some new movies. Do some different activities. Change your activities a little bit. And when you feel a little stressed, you feel like you're not improving enough, well, then do more repetition. Choose a few things. Uh, you know, my VIP lessons are good for this and do a lot of repetition. And you can kind of, again, you manage the repetition and the newness. You need both. And you can also do this in general in your own personal life. So in your own life, in your life in general, if you're feeling bored or depressed, you're just like, ah, uh, Every day is the same. I'm tired. I'm bored in my life. Well, then what? You need some variety. You need some change. Do something special or interesting. Change your life. Do some, just do something crazy. Fun and crazy. Not dangerous, but just fun, crazy, totally different. You need some newness. And at times when you're feeling overwhelmed and just there's too much and you're really stressed out, well, then maybe you need to simplify and just kind of slow down your life and just have a predictable day every day, kind of have some predictable habits that you do until you feel more calm again. And you can build even for yourself individually kind of repeating habits that are special. You can, through the week, maybe maybe on Wednesdays, you uh, every Wednesday you meet a friend at a coffee shop. So it's a variety, right? It's a special thing you do once a week. It's only once a week, but it's also predictable. And you can kind of create these through your week that you, so you won't be bored, but you won't be stressed. You get the idea. It's a pretty simple idea, but I think that it's a good one to think about because it's a really great way to manage feeling either bored or feeling stressed. All right, let's get to our questions and comments. Okay, so Vladislav, so there's a good point. Vladislav, good to see you. 
But I found that some of these holidays like New Year's, Christmas, Easter have become a bit boring. Everything seems to be the same. Maybe having kids changes the situations they teach you to enjoy again. Well, for you're absolutely right. Like Christmas now that I have children has become quite interesting again. Now they're babies this year, so they don't know, right? But but uh, but next year they will certainly be aware of Christmas. And I saw that with my own with my sister too. That yeah, as you become an adult, maybe um, maybe some of these things become a little less exciting. But then you have children, and now you see the excitement of your children. And now it's your job as a parent to you know maybe get them a gift, teach them the traditions, tell them the stories, make the decorations, and it all becomes quite new and fun and exciting again. So that is true that having children does change it and improves the situation. For sure it does. The other thing you can do, Vladislav, is that Let's say, okay, you have Christmas, you celebrate Christmas, and you're feeling like, well, oh, Christmas is feeling a bit boring. We do exactly the same thing every Christmas. So do something new. Start some new Christmas traditions. Um, like if you've never gone out singing, if that's part of your culture, go out singing. Find a group and go, they're called Christmas carols. Go out and sing Christmas songs, walking around your neighborhood, singing to different neighbors something new or maybe like for a while I would go see the Nutcracker with uh, some friends this was you know many years ago the Nutcracker is kind of a traditional it's a it's basically a traditional um, Christmas story uh, you know it's a ballet but it's pretty famous and you could maybe find some certain events that you some new events that you'll do and make them new traditions. So change your traditions a little bit or add some new ones. And this can kind of make that fresh again. Ah, here's a good quote. Dalal says, you know, family gatherings now can be a lot of people staring at phones. No one's aware about what's going on around them. We just hear high and by. Turn off the phones. Make this a new rule, a new part of your traditions that when you get together at a family gathering, that all phones must be turned off. Off, not vibrate. Off. Yeah, like Sarah. Sarah likes variety, I think, a little more. She says we need variety in our life. I can't be stable for three days in the same uh, rotten way. I'll be bored. There you go. The same routine. Um, exactly. So you can, and you, so this is what's great is you can manage this depending on your personality. I also get a bit bored easily. I like a, a good amount of variety, but I like, you know, I like, I like kind of regular things too. So you just find what works for you. And some of you are going to like a lot more variety, a lot more change, lots of new stuff. And some of you like kind of just a very stable life and you know, less, less change. So you can just manage this yourself. Yeah, so this is nice. Beckhall says, uh, it's enjoyable to start the day with your show, finally catching you live. Welcome. Funda, hey Funda. She says, AJ, your advice is super. I think the same. Family is so important. We often have family reading time, walking in the mountains together. Okay, so here's some great, great kind of uh, traditions or habits you can build with families. Walking in the mountains together. That's a great one. Reading together. You can create a lot of them and you can, some of them can be scheduled, right? So they're kind of predictable and some of them maybe a little just whenever. Thank you, Renu says, Merry Christmas to you and your sweet family, AJ. Thank you very much. Mindo says, I read that Japanese don't do fireworks on New Year's Eve, but they take sight for the first sunrise of the year. I don't know. I didn't know that. I'll ask my wife. <laughs>
Tian says, children like variety. They like things that change and change fast. Elders are supposed to like the idea of certainty. Yeah, but Tian, you'll, if you have children, I don't know if you do, but if you do, they like stability too. Too much change for kids uh, stresses them out. They like like a predictable routine. They like to, you know, to have a, a, a bedtime. They just, they're much happier when they have, you know, like kind of a same bedtime every night and they wake up basically at the same time and they like, they need that stability very much. They need it. Yes. And of course they like to explore new things too, but don't neglect uh, the stability part because kids certainly need that. Yeah, like Lisa, this is called like an oxymoron. It seems like an opposite statement, but it's not. Someone said, in the world, one thing is constant change. Right, it's just, Buddhists teach that a lot. Feliz Navidad means, Sylvia says, Merry Christmas, which is in Spanish. Feliz Navidad. There's a nice song about, about that. Oh, Ken. Hey, Ken. Ken says, uh, Merry Christmas, AJ. Merry Christmas, Separateless English family. I've just gotten back from the United States. Now I can speak English with Americans. Fantastic. I'm um, great. That's great. I'm glad you had that chance. Congratulations to you. Very good. Yeah, okay, this is well said, like my, my kind of summarizing here. As a human being, we need to feel safe and com comfortable with our lives. And that ha I believe that happens by routine. Right. But very much of that will be boring, so then we can do something new. Right. So we're kind of, our psychology, we need both. Right? We need the kind of the repetition and the, of, the, of some routines and predictability. Eh, but we need... But we need enough variety so we don't get bored. That, that that's so we learn and feel challenged. Alex Salazar says, "I read in New Zealand Christmas Day is in summer." That's correct. Australia too. That's right. Down under, the seasons are opposite of north of the north, right? So for them, it's summer. It's a summer uh, holiday, summer tradition. Okay, Juan says, uh, change is inevitable in this digital era, especially for conventional businesses. Otherwise, they'll get disrupted by newcomers. Well, indeed, there are certain, even certain areas of life, like, for example, digital business, where the, the change is quite fast. There's a lot of change. And, it's, and indeed, this can be very stressful. There's not enough stability. It can be quite stressful and, and difficult. Um, But you're right. In other areas, change happens a lot more slowly. I agree with Alaman Ali says, social media, for example, Facebook, makes a huge distance among family members. We should break out of this prison, eliminate the worst habits. Uh, I agree that face-to-face -face is better. So, and when you get together face to face with your family, like I said, discuss it with them. You know, don't don't be angry about it. Just say, look, let's we're getting together to spend time together. So let's turn off our phones. Let's make a rule. When we're together as a family, the phones are off. We only see each other, you know, we don't see each other all the time. So phones off. All right. Professor, of course, Brazil, South America is the same. 
Christmas is in summer in Brazil too. Exactly, right? Brazil and Argentina, Chile. Uh, Ecuador is always summer, right? <laughs> Some of these places are always summer if you get near the equator. Um, but yeah, as, as, as you get into this farther south, then of course the seasons are reversed from the north. And that would be true for Panama. I think Panama is always summer too, right? Ricardo says, greetings from Bocas del Toro, Panama. Always watch your videos. Thank you. You know, in the tropics, though, they also have kind of seasons, you know, like, for example, in Thailand. So they don't really have summer, winter, right? But they have rainy season, cool season, and hot season. Uh, in India, they have the monsoon season, right? So also, there's a cool season and a hot season, really hot, and uh, the rainy season, the monsoon. Or like in Thailand, we always joked, there's the hot season and then there's the hotter season. <laughs> there's the hot, the hotter, and the hot and wet season. <laughs> so, they're all hot. And actually, you know, like Sunil says, Parts of India can get, I think northern India can actually get a little chilly. A little chilly. Of course, in the mountains. But even, I remember I was in Delhi one year in the winter. And uh, I was surprised how cool it got. Not not super cold, like Canada, but, but fairly cold. It kind of surprised me. Oh, look, hey, it was, uh, congrats to Uluk. He says, I deleted social media. I'm 24. Life is much simpler. Well, congrats to you. You're a good example. Very good. Nice. Nicely done. Farahi says, Faraji says, happy seasons to you, AJ, and your beloved family. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who are wishing me. I'm not reading everyone because a lot... There's so many comments, but thank you to all of you who are saying Merry Christmas and the same to you. Yeah, like uh, uh, like Alex Salazar says, in Egypt, Christmas Day is on January 7th. Yeah, that's right. So it's, um, what is it? Is it Russia? Is it January 6th or January 7th? Is that that's the Orthodox Day, right? Um, but it's right. It's not... Everybody, for everybody, it's not the 25th. Jorge, thank you. Also wishing us all a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Jorge. In Mexico, in Campeche, Mexico. Oh, so Funda says, I didn't, so Turkey gets snow. I also didn't know that. I kind of picture Turkey as more tropical, but in Ankara, the capital city, it snows. But here in Anamur, we have sunshine and at night it rains so much, right? So it's like some places it's more about the rain the, the, in the tropics, right? Rainy season, dry season. And someone else from Panama. Thank you for what you're doing to help others in life from the heat capital of America, of the Americas, Panama, the Republic of Panama. <laughs> yeah, it's hot, right? <laughs> I want to go to Panama. I want to go to Panama, Costa Rica. I'd love to go down there. Dominican Republic. Some do a tour, Colombia, etc. I got to do a tour of Central South America. I've been to Honduras and Guatemala, but I've never been farther south. So I haven't been to Nicaragua, Panama, Costa Rica. I haven't been to South America at all, and I would like to go. Okay, i got to try to pronounce some Russian here. Vladislav says, Merry Christmas. Here's how they say it in Russian. Let's see. Sh oh, gosh. Wow. Shashlivogo <laughs> Rostestva. Okay, Vladislav, right. January 7th in Russia also. So I think that's the Orthodox Christmas Day. Mm. 
but you know, a lot of times we just say Merry Christmas, uh, at least in America, American tradition and culture. We say Merry Christmas for the whole season. And really, that's almost that's all of December. You'll you'll find in America, people will say Merry Christmas from like December 1st until December 25th. So so the American Christmas is December 25th, unless, of course, unless someone's Orthodox. But for most people in America, they celebrate Christmas December 25th tomorrow for me. And uh, but it's kind of a merry it's common to say Merry Christmas the whole time right it's the christmas season so december 7 or december 9th uh people will still say merry christmas so that's why i've you'll notice on gab or some here i'll say merry christmas we'll say merry christmas merry christmas until Jan, uh, des, uh, until december 25th okay see you vladislav he's got to go for now Lots of people. We got people from Albania. <laughs> Flash says you pronounced almost correct in Russian. <laughs> I'll have to hear a video sometime. I'll see if I can find the correct pronunciation somewhere. Yeah, and like Samaya mentions, in Kurdistan, the 21st of December is the first day of winter. In most of the north, Northern Hemisphere, right? The North, uh, December 21st is called the, you know, the winter solstice, right? It's the around, some, it might vary a little bit, but around that time, it is traditionally the start of winter because it's the shortest day of the year. And so this is kind of the pre-Christian roots of the holiday of this these festivals is that they, so before Christianity, right? It was more focused on nature, the beginning of winter, the shortest day of the year, get together and have a feast, right? A big meal and parties and enjoyment with your family, be ready for the winter time, all of these kind of things, right? Okay, just a few more minutes and I'm going to go. It'll be a little shorter today for the show. I'm going to go play with my babies. It's like Christmas Eve. Play with my babies. I'm Ed with an English question. I'm looking for a job in Dubai. In Dubai, I need to be fluent. I'm not. I think, I think I'm beginner or advanced. Uh, there's any way to fix it. Well, basically, to be fluent, you're going to have to listen, listen, listen a huge amount. And then you're going to have to do some speaking. So listen, you know, as many hours per day as you can to English. Listen, 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 listen. Get in, a, I don't know, 2,000 hours of listening. Then do a lot of speaking, right? You can speak to people online. Join our speaking challenge in February. It's my quick advice. Okay, Elena. Elena says, Hi, Jay. We moved from MA, uh, Massachusetts, which is the northeast part of America, Boston area, to the San Francisco Bay Area six months ago. We were kind of frustrated. This style of life absolutely doesn't fit us. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> I kind of understand. I lived in San Francisco for six years, and yeah, I get it. There are some things about it. It's a, it's a pretty city, I think. But uh, overall, I don't like the culture of that area. Not at all. So I kind of understand how it might be frustrating. We'd like to say thanks. You helped us a lot to improve our English. Well, good luck, Elena. That's a hard move. It's a big culture change from the Northeast to San Francisco area. Uh, you know, I don't know. Good luck to you, and... If you hate it, hopefully you can move back or move somewhere else. But uh, good luck to you. 
and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Lisa says, many times we're afraid of change because we are uncertain. We do not know what the new brings. Although it has potential for joy and development, strong faith can help. You're correct about this. The more you have faith, the less you fear change. That is for sure. You're absolutely right. So developing faith can build your enjoyment of change. Nice comment, Lisa. Amir, now I'm not sure. Amir asked a question. I'm not sure I know what this means. <sighs> Amir says, can you please make your next video about getting ready for an English class demo? Demo means demonstration, but I don't, I, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you a teacher? You have to do a, like you have to do a demo class, a demonstration class to show your teaching ability, or is this some other thing? I, I don't know what, it, I don't know what you mean really. If you're a student, I don't know. What's a demo? What's an English class demo? What is that? I don't know what it is. There you go. Vladimir is getting ready now. <laughs> For the, he says, Vladimir uh, Medvedev says, during this holiday, I'm going to get more time to talk with Everest English members and, I'm, and prepare for the February challenge. Excellent. I was just talking to my wife about this, the February challenge, how that uh, I also need to prepare. I'm just being lazy the rest of this month. I'm basically doing zero Japanese, zero Spanish right now. In January, I'm going to uh, have my wife, I'm going to record my wife talking to her family in Japanese, phone calls. I've got a phone re recorder now. And use and I was talking to her about doing this. She agreed. Her family agreed. So I'll get ready and then back into the listening again. And then in January and then in February, we do our challenge. And I'll be joining that too. Okay, a couple more and time to go. Santosh from India. Hello to you. Thank you. And welcome. Uh, Platforma says, I saw a link for Effortless English for Kids. Not yet. I'll figure out how to do it eventually. All righty then. And, uh, Dalal, I'll kind of... Dalal says, can you do a public speaking course for us online? Yeah, I'd like to do a public speaking course. It's kind of one of the ideas I... I started one. I started, uh, I really outlined it. I did a, a good amount of work on one, preparing it. And uh, I don't know, then I got started doing other things instead. But I would like to do a public speaking course. It's, it's a favorite topic of mine. I quite enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it because, or I'd like to teach it because I really understand it, meaning I, I was not naturally good at it. Right. I, I was like most of you probably where I was really terrible, 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 terrible at public speaking, super nervous about it. You know, when I first took my first class, which is a Dale Carnegie class in public speaking, really horrible. Right. I was terrified of it, really. I'm so nervous and shaking. And so I uh, did not start with good skills and then managed over well, really several years, I'd say to become quite good at it. Am I Tony Robbins level? Probably not, but pretty good. I'm pretty good at public speaking. I enjoy it, very confident about it. So I understand the process. I understand how you can be really bad and become good. So I would like to share that with you, just the, the, the methods, the techniques, with, uh, with you all, so that those of you who want to be good at public speaking, you can just follow the same thing. You can do what I did, and you'll get the same result. You know, it's uh, you definitely can do it. It doesn't matter. Even if you were really bad at public speaking, 
even if you're super nervous and you feel terrible about it, don't feel don't 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 despair. Don't feel too bad about it because uh, you you can improve. You can become very good. It's definitely possible. Even if you're an introvert, even if you're shy, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's there are techniques, there are methods, there are ways of practicing, and you can become very very good, better than ninety nine point nine percent of speakers. You know, uh, I I'd say I'm in that category. I'm better than ninety nine point nine percent of public speakers because most a lot of public speakers are terrible. Even if they're not nervous, there are a lot of uh, public speakers. They're not nervous anymore. They do it a lot. Even professionals uh, who speak professionally, they make money as public speakers. But they're they're boring. They just have no style. They have no no um, no energy. No no understanding of the performance art <laughs> that's necessary, right? To keep an audience interested and engaged. So, but these are all things you learn. It's not like I'm some genius. It's just, there are just certain techniques and methods. And then when you learn them and you practice them, you become good. It's a skill. And then you also will be good. So I'll, yes, I'll do it someday. I'll do a public speaking course. Excuse me. <coughs> Start laughing and then coughing. Funda says, why do you have an iron door around you? That's a baby gate behind me. So so the baby can't can't get in here and grab my camera. That's why. <laughs> yeah, see, Sarah says, we have a group on Skype. We're already started the speaking challenge. Good for you, Sarah. See, just taking initiative, proactive. They're just taking action. They're not waiting. They're jumping in. Good for you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Santosh asking a writing question. Is it, it, is it essential, right, necessary, to use complex structures in essays? No. Write simply. Use simple sentence structures, direct sentences. That's the best way to write. Even for native speakers, it's the best way. Generally, you know, care f occasionally to maybe to communicate your idea, you, you need a longer sentence or something. But as a general rule, as a general principle, short, direct sentences are best. <laughs> Elena says, I just asked my children, who is it? And they answered, AJ Hogue. They know you and your mini stories. Thanks for all you're doing. Thanks, Elena. All right, guys. I guess it's time to go. So let's just end and say again, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Christmas Eve here in Japan. It's Christmas Eve tomorrow. Christmas Day. I hope you all have a great Christmas. If you're Christian, of course, especially if you're Christian. But if you're not Christian, uh, for many, it's a cultural holiday. Um, and of course, for Christians, it's a very serious religious holiday. For all of you, Merry Christmas. And we'll be back after Christmas. We'll start talking about the new year, getting ready for our you know, our new, year, new year's goals. It's, it's always a nice time of year in January to make, to make a big push with your English. It's winter time in the north, at least. It's the new year. It's a great time to make an extra effort to improve your English. So we'll do that in January. So until then, lots of love to you. And I'll see you next time. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you after Christmas Day. <laughs>